I'm terrified. I'm terrified on on a tour when we're at our best. I'm still like I still struggle getting on stage, so it's especially difficult. I love it when it's been a while. Me more, the rowdier the better. Yeah. Truck, metal, prog, and everything in between. Welcome to this episode of Talking Rock with Meltdown. Don't forget to follow the audio only Talking Rock podcast on all podcast platforms. And now it's time for today's conversation. Here's Meltdown. We've got the coffee and everything. How you doing, guys? Great. Good. good. Yeah. Fresh Rock cup. Up. Yeah, fresh cup. That's right. Yeah. Last time you guys uh, sat in the studio here, I had asked you about new music, and you all you all kind of looked like, eh, 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 you know. So what's going on with the new music now? Nah, nah. <laughs> uh, no, it's finally getting done. It's it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of miraculous to be honest with you. Now, yeah. was this something that, uh, Josh, let me ask you, did, is this something that, uh, did you have ideas rattling around in your brain or did it all come out at once or did, did you piece things together over time? How does it work? Lot, lots of ideas all the time and uh, lots of self-doubt and that's why nothing can get done. <laughs> like great, great ideas in the moment. Um, I'll get super excited about something and then a little bit of time goes by and it just starts to not feel special anymore and i'm like ah garbage throw it away throw it away next idea and then that had the cycle repeats for a really long time until eventually they're like hey your band's running out of money you should probably put out some music soon <laughs> is that the deal the band's running out of money wow we're breaking <laughs> here already but yeah you know it's funny because uh in my home studio sometimes i'll do something and i'll go to bed and i'll wake up the next morning and i'm like yeah that's not as good as i thought it was when i went to bed yeah but you ever had the opposite where you wake up and you're like, this is way better than I thought it was. I've never had that. So, so have you had that with this, with this album or with yeah, the I ha I've had that a lot where I wake up and I'm like, okay, I wasn't crazy. This was great. But then the next night I go to sleep and wake up the next morning and I'm like, no, it isn't good. <laughs> I'll have these like crazy ups and ups and downs where I'm like, this is it. I'm going to buy three houses with this song. And then I'm like, nah, this is gonna. Well, this smaller. one's the government's going to take my house when I put this one out. Smaller houses, right? Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, so I was I was thinking about this on the way in, and you, you may have just uh, blown this question since you said the bands run out of money. But what is the uh, what is the <laughs> uh, what what is like what is like your the the goal of this album coming out? Oh, it's obviously to make a bunch of money, <laughs> stay in our houses. Uh, <laughs> no, the goal is never the goal has never been money. Uh, truly, it hasn't. Um, the goal with this one, that's a tough question because, because uh, the motivation for why we do what we do has been like a, has been a really big, big issue in my head lately. And when you're younger, it makes a lot more sense. Um, you see rock stars on TV and you're like, that looks like the most fun ever. I want to do that. And you pick up an instrument and maybe you're like, oh, I'm kind of good at this, this sort of makes sense then you start to get really good at it and then other people notice and you're like so laser focused on this thing and then i don't know i'm sure a lot of people in successful positions in, in any sort of field but especially like in in creative fields and and entertain entertainment type fields the the motivation for it doesn't feel as pure anymore once you've sort of had some success with it it doesn't it doesn't feel like um i don't know maybe you feel less deserving or something because you already have it and there are other people who are like who have never even had a taste of it who just want it so bad. I don't know. It's a, it's a really weird um, it's a weird business. It's a weird career. And so I've been wrestling with that a lot, where I'm trying to re inspire myself and find the motivation that I had when I was younger before I had anything. Uh, but you can't force that. It doesn't. You can't just like force it to come back. Yeah, that's um, interesting because I just read Geezer Butler's book from Black Sabbath. And of course, when they started out, they were super poor and very working class families. And then he's like, yeah, seven, eight years in, we're living in these big giant houses and we're trying to figure out how to write music that like yeah. was was what we did originally. Yeah, it gets hard. I mean, even even not, you know, our bands had some success, but, we're, you know. We we get our little you know our little uh, our little checks put into our banks and it's not it's not much, um, but it's not the money so much. It's more like the status. You know, we've sort of elevated as people and and we're respected in the industry that we always wanted to be respected in in ways. And uh, yeah, it's just you're just not as you can't force yourself to be hungry anymore. The one of the things that's keeping me going is not having a Grammy. I want a Grammy so bad. I've wanted a <laughs> Grammy my whole life. 
Um, and and so until that happens, there's still there's still some gas left in the tank. Um, but I I think now I'm what I've been trying to do is shift my mo motivation more towards um, figuring out whatever it is that I want to say at any given moment and knowing that artistically I have an ability to uh, to uh, emote to communicate. to communicate that's yeah. the word i'm looking for yeah. To, yeah to communicate that in a way that other people either enjoy or make them feel connected to in some way and that in itself is a special thing it's not about me and my success and my you know my status my fame my money it's it's more about the fact that that feels really good it feels good for me to do it and it's especially good when other people are affected in, in a positive way by it so that's that is more the motivation now and I think it's a more, it's a, actually a more pure motivation than just being young and be like, I want to be a rock star. But it's not as, uh, it's just not as, um, it's not as fiery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just a well, little, it's a little tamer of a motivation. And so we trying to figure out what to do with that is, is difficult. Well, when you go, when you're, when you're traveling across the country in, in, in vans and barely making it and whatever, then next thing you know, you're playing Riff Fest in September of 2023. And there's like 10 or 11,000 people that are watching your show that could probably play a little bit of uh, games in your mind. Yeah. It would becomes, it, it becomes normal. Yeah. Uh, and then another really weird thing is when that becomes normal and then we go and play a show and it's like, there's only 150 people here. <laughs> Then it's then it's like the fall from grace. It hurts. Yeah. It hurts. Well, I just talked to Peanut from 311 and he said this business could be very humbling and it should be. Yeah. Yes, it should. Yeah. yeah. So what when's the record drop? What's the name of it? I probably should know this stuff of uh, or maybe you guys haven't even released it. I'm not even sure. We probably should know this stuff too. Okay. Yeah. No, it doesn't exist yet. Okay, gotcha. So the first single, uh, Teacher Has a Gun, that's out. I saw the video for that one. And then also, you guys wrote a song called Detroit. That's right. And we're here in Detroit, so tell me about that. It's all, it's about you. I'm very humbled. <laughs> no, it's actually, it's not about Detroit. It has nothing to do with Detroit, other than the fact that we wrote it in Detroit on the bus. And uh, we had a show that night, and we had the audience sing a part of the song, and we recorded it, and that's in the song. No kidding. So is, is the word Detroit, the town Detroit mentioned anywhere in the song? No. Okay. <laughs> no. It's one of those songs. I got you. Yeah. So um, I don't know if I was there yeah. that night. I was married. I was married. I'm pretty sure I wasn't. So what do you do? Do you stop? Do you stop the show and kind of explain to them what's going on and then just have them? Yeah. 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 I said I, I we it was between probably like before our last song. I was like, hey, we just wrote something in the bus that requires a, a crowd vocal. Would you guys be interested in saying they were stoked? And uh, I taught him a quick phrase and I had him repeat it a couple times while Anthony kept time on his hi hat quietly so it wouldn't be you know too loud in the recording. And they did it a couple times and that was it. And it was perfect. That's awesome. So yeah. so, <laughs> so that's gonna appear on the record. What else? What other kind of stuff are you uh you writing about, singing about on the album? A little bit of polka. <laughs> uh, a little bit of well, there's a cello back there. Yeah. Cello. <laughs> cello. Uh, uh... Sorry, what was the question? <laughs> what other kind of topics? What kind of stuff influenced you that you're writing about on this record? Uh, being American in in 2023, 24, 25, whatever year it is, yeah. Uh, yeah, just sort of like general surroundings and feelings, which we've always sort of done. Um, there's some, there's some very personal. So like Detroit's quite personal. Uh, and 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 honest and real. Uh, it's 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 a bad flower album. It's mm. it's it, it goes it goes all over the place. Like songs like "Teacher Has a Gun." Uh, yeah, it's everything. Mm -hmm. But there's but there's definitely like ups and downs. There's slow songs. There's fast songs. There's chaos. There is honesty. All of it. Well, yeah. So you said like a bad flower record. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like us. It sounds like what we do. <laughs> So I think uh, if I know I was thinking, I think Joey was posting a story yesterday on his Instagram. Were you guys at the Ryman? Yeah, yesterday. What's going on there? Filming a music video. Okay. Can and we're also playing the Ryman on our tour. But that's not coming up till later. Right. Yeah, we just we we filmed uh, some band shots there. Okay. Yesterday for for the next music video that's coming out for Detroit. 
We filmed our Detroit music video in Nashville. Does, are you offended? <laughs> no, not at all. I've been to the Ryman several times. I love the Ryman. That place is great. Yeah, it was a cool place to film. It was very nice. Yeah. Did you have any haunted encounters? <laughs> no, is that haunted? They say that. Is that a thing? Yeah. Oh. They say that about everywhere that's old, though. I know. They do. Yeah. yeah. You're right. Yeah. But, uh, no, that's cool. So you shot Detroit at the Ryman. Yeah. Wow. All right. Yeah, I saw that on, on, on his uh, Instagram yesterday. I was curious about that. And I guess you guys are playing an upheaval this weekend as well. How do you like those big festival shows like Rift Fest last year? Is that this weekend? Yeah. We leave in like a couple of days. Shit. Yeah. Uh, I'm feeling unprepared. It's been a yeah. little while since we played a show. And uh, yeah. I love it. I was going to say, more. yeah, what, what, what's it going to be like to get back on stage? Uh, Exhilarating. I, I'm terrified. I'm terrified on, on a tour when we're at our best. I'm still like, I still struggle getting on stage. So it's especially difficult. I love it. When it's been a while. Me more. The, the rowdier, the better. <laughs> yeah. Truly. No, but I will say this. I'm glad, I'm glad for it to be a festival and not a headlining show. Like yeah. slightly shorter set. And also in a festival environment, people are just like drunk in there to have a good time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It just doesn't feel like the festival shows, even when they're like massive and there's a ton of people, they feel like way less pressure yeah. than like yeah. when you're inside of a theater or a club or something and people are there for you and, and you know, they're very attentive. Is that where some of the fear comes from, especially when you're headlining? Or are you it, just it comes from all over the place. Um, no, I'm, I'm serious. I'm scared. Yeah. I'm scared. I'm scared of people. Um, I just get nervous. I just care a lot. I care a lot. I want to do a good job. I want to be perceived a certain way. And uh, and and I'm just nervous that I'm not going to, that I'm not going to perform my best. And uh, I think that's part of what makes me good at it. I think if I didn't have that fear, I probably wouldn't do as good of a job, maybe. So is it like uh, is it like playing sports where it's like, you know, you're nervous and thinking about it, and all of a sudden you get that first hit in after you start the game, and all of a sudden you, then things start to calm down? Yeah, I can't imagine. Yeah. Can you imagine yeah. playing sports professionally? Really? Yeah. Oh my is, goodness. Because after that, it's you're you're so familiar with that first hit. You're just, you just you turn on. I and wake that's up exactly what it is. That's exactly. What I it is. wake up on the bus with like a tiny tickle in my throat, and I'm like, "Show's ruined. Show's ruined." <laughs> I can't imagine waking up and being like, "Oh, my foot is asleep." In the like, <laughs> there's no way I'm gonna be able to <laughs> play. No way. Oh, that sounds horrific. I would never want to do professional sports. <laughs> now, are you I guys are you guys based out in Nashville or are you just just there? Uh, we're I live here now. I've been here actually for a while. He's in Pittsburgh. Two two band members in Pittsburgh, two in Nashville. We all started in LA and now we've moved. Yeah, shifted to the middle of the country. How do you like Nashville? Yeah. I love it. It's been really hot, but I love it. Yeah, so I would, I would, I'm assuming you and Joey lived down there because he was the one messaging me when I was there a few, a few months ago. Yeah, he's in Nashville, Nashville. I'm more, I'm more in like Tennessee. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of far from the city, but uh, yeah, I bought a farm, so I live on a farm. Are you for real? Yeah, we're on a farm right now. Now, see, I'm a country boy, and I, you didn't strike me as a country boy. I'm not. Well, I am now. <laughs> How did that affect? I have, I have a tractor and everything. <laughs> yeah. Did that affect your 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 writing at all this for this record? Probably, probably in ways that I don't even know. <laughs> Cover of big yeah. tractor. I gotta say, it's the goofiest thing watching him in his pink shoes and ripped tight jeans driving the tractor around. It's goofy. <laughs> it's how many right. acres, how many acres you got down there? Uh oh, we're froze up. Oh, we lost them. Oh, there we go. You hear? You there? Uh, yeah. 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 How I many, can hear you. How many 20, 20, 21 acres. Wow. Yeah. That's great. How much you take care of? Uh, All of it up until lately. We still, we, we got a company that does, uh, they're, they're, they're cultivate, they cultivate, hay. They cultivate hay. So we, so we've, pour, we've sectioned off like probably 10 acres for them. And uh, so they basically just tend to that 10 acres for now, and we don't have to deal with it, um, which is nice. It's really, really nice because it's it's so much. Yeah, I can imagine. That's got to be a lot of work, so. Yeah. 
That's really cool, man. I'm a country boy myself. I don't have I, I don't have 20 acres, but uh, man, I'll tell you what. All right, yeah. they're telling me I got to start wrapping this up. I didn't even know they were on here, but let's uh, wrap it up, and we'll see you guys here September uh, 24th. The No Place Like Home Tour. What what is that? What's that title reference? Something that's coming later. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Well, uh, hang on. I, funny story. We've named we've named tours after songs that didn't come out before, and just never said anything. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we expected a song to come out, and then and then I probably got cold feet, and I was like, I don't like the song. I don't want it to come out, and I throw it in the garbage. But then the tour is still named that. <laughs> so just just a fun fact: if yeah. you've ever been like, why did they name their tour this? I don't know. Mm. All right. Well, no place like home. We'll look forward to seeing you guys September twenty fourth here in Detroit. <laughs> Sounds good. See you then. Thank you guys so much. Have a great time uh, and upheaval this weekend and safe travels.